Okay, so I'm a PhD student at University of Cambridge, and I've worked a lot with Hugo. Um, and in fact, Hugo was going to present to prepare this presentation, but he wasn't able to make it. So my last few weeks have been pulling this together as quickly as possible. So there may be some questions I can't answer because I haven't looked at this for as long as Hugo has. Anyway, so there are implementations of matrix algorithms everywhere. In particular, there's this LAPAC library which has been around for decades and is used in pretty much every language you might pick up for scientific computing or engineering. And algorithms that might be of particular interest to us are square roots, exponentials, logarithms, and eigen decompositions. Now here there are matrices, but we'd like to use these for multivectors. And we don't just want to use them for special cases of multivectors like just the rotors or just 3D GA. We'd like to be able to use them for any size multivector, just as we can use them for any size matrix. And so there are two different ways we could go here. We could either use the existing libraries and their implementations for multivector computation by sending our multivectors to a matrix and back, or we take the implementation itself and we change it to work better for multivectors. So look at the algorithm rather than the implementation and we use that. And maybe one day there'll be a gap hack to go with the lap hack. So let's look at how we can represent multivectors matrices. This isn't new, but it's nice to summarize it. So we have, we'll use G2 because it's small and we don't need to write many coefficients. And we'll use superscript indices as the coefficients. There's an easy way to convert between a multivector and a vector representation of its coefficients, where you just take all the coefficients and stack them up in a vector. And this is a linear, equi linear equivalent. It preserves zero, it preserves addition, and it preserves scaling. What's more interesting is the embedding into a matrix algorithm, matrix algebra. So if we have an arbitrary Clifford algebra over PQR, we can embed that into a matrix of two to the P plus Q plus R by two to the P plus Q plus R, which we call M. And if you notice the first column of M is just V because it is the part of the matrix that multiplies by one. And this is a linear map. It preserves zero addition and scaling but it's also a morphism of algebras. So it maps the one multivector to the identity matrix. It maps the product of multivectors to the product of their matrices. Uh, and it also preserves the reversion, which it sends to the transpose. And it also interacts with the V function in some interesting ways. And the fact that this is a morphism of algebras is very useful because it means if you have any multivector expression consisting only of addition and multiplication or scaling or transpose or sorry, or reversion, then you can convert the whole expression into matrices and it will mean exactly the same thing. Sometimes though we want to go in the other direction. And clearly this mapping is not subjective. There are some matrices which do not fit the pattern of this four by four matrix. So it doesn't have a two-sided inverse, but there's an easy one-sided inverse we can pick, which is just to take that first column back out of the matrix and turn it back into a multivector. So here we, we have M inverse is take the first column, and then V inverse is convert that column matrix into a multivector. And obviously by inspection, it is a left inverse. It's by no means the only left inverse we could pick. If you choose more sophisticated choices, you can end up satisfying more properties than simply the left inverse property. But for what we're going to do next, we don't care about those and this is the simplest implementation. So if we want to reuse an existing matrix algorithm F, we're looking for a multi-vector algorithm we'll call wrap F that makes the following, di following diagram commute. And what I mean by commute is we can follow any path through the arrows and we get the same result. So either you can take your um, original multi-vector, you can send it to the matrix alg algebra, then apply your original function, or you can apply your wrap function, then send it to the matrix algebra. And you want to have the same result whichever thing you do. And of course, the easy solution here is just to chase the arrows. So we start with our, um, we apply M inverse to get back here. Then we apply F and then we apply M. And that will give us a function, of this function wrap F. This doesn't always produce meaningful results, of course. It depends on exactly what F is and whether it has desirable properties. Uh, but as an example of this being used today, this was one of the first inverse algorithms that the Clifford Python package used, which simply to convert to a matrix, do the inverse of that matrix and then pull out the first column. So let's look at a slightly more interesting example of a function we might want to apply this technique to. 
We should all be familiar with the exponential function and how it can be defined via a Taylor expansion. And this will work on any ring. So it works on matrices, it works on multivectors, it works on the reals. If we pass this through the m function, we can distribute m over the summation, the division, and the power. And we can see that our m conversion from multivectors to matrices is also, also preserves the exponentiation. And this means it satisfies exactly what we need it to satisfy for our wrap expression to work. So when we plug in f equals exp, we can swap the order of the m and the exponential. And then we have an m inverse m, which is the left inverse property that defined m inverse. So taken with the fact that the exponential is unique, this tells us that it doesn't matter what algorithm we have for computing the exponential function, that we can apply it to the matrix produced from a multivector and then take the first column and that will give us the exponent of that multivector. But, so while we could use the naive implementation of the Taylor expansion, because it doesn't matter what algorithm we can use, we can use a more efficient algorithm like the XBM function from SciPy, which builds upon LaPac. Let's look at another example of a function we might want to lift to multivectors. The square root is a bit more problematic as it's not unique. While it's obvious that if you have a square root of a multivector, then that multivector, that square root mapped into a matrix will be a square root of the corresponding matrix. It's not the only square root of the matrix. So applying a square root algorithm to the matrix may result in a, square, a matrix square root, square root that is not in the form needed by a multivector. So as an example, this matrix S is one of the square roots of the identity matrix, but it doesn't fit the pattern of um, the outputs that our M function can produce where all the diagonal entries have to be the same. As it happens, we can still take the first column of this matrix and it will still tell us that one is a square root of one, but it's not clear that this would apply in general. From here, we can go in two directions. We can either try and prove or disprove whether this approach works in general, either by coming up with a counterexample or coming up with a proof, or we can just look at one specific square root algorithm and show that that one is valid. We'll go with the second option. But if we're going to look at one specific algorithm, we may as well adapt that algorithm to work with multivectors. So here's the main idea of this presentation. Instead of reusing an implementation of an algorithm, we can re-implement it for multivectors. So the disadvantage of doing this is that we can no longer use existing binaries like LaPact, which are tried, tested, and optimized. Uh, we have to write our own new code so we can be introducing bugs. And there are some operations that are hard to translate. So for instance, you can't really do an LUD composition of a um, multivector because the meaning of upper and lower diagonal doesn't really make sense. Triangular, sorry, lower and upper triangular. Uh, but the advantage is was we're no longer handing around redundant coefficients. When we did this transfer transformation from the multivector to the matrix, we increased the number of coefficients by a factor of capital N, where N is two to the power of P plus Q plus R. And this cascades through everything. It makes our addition cheaper by a factor of N and our multiplication cheaper by a factor of N if we do all our computation directly in the multivector space. Um, in the same realm, we'll end up with less memory consumption. If we looked at this in detail, we might be able to find some multivector specific optimizations where some conditions that are not true for all matrices may be automatically true for all multivectors. And finally, we hopefully don't need to worry about whether our inverse function of M is valid. So let's look at the square root and we'll, what we'll look at here is an algorithm from the book Functions and Matrices, Theories and Computation, which is one of the resources used, one of the references from LaPac. And so here's an algorithm for computing the square root of a um, matrix B and it computes it in XK. So this is an iterative algorithm and there are some termination conditions that I haven't shown here. But the key thing to note is that in these expressions, all we have are basic algebraic operators. We have multiplication, we have multiplication by a scalar and addition, and we have the identity matrix. And so we can hypothesize, well, what if we set MK to be, let's pretend there is a multivector corresponding to each of these variables. So we'll say that MK is the, multi, the matrix corresponding to MK prime, X is the matrix corresponding to XK prime, and B is the matrix corresponding to the multivector A. And we can substitute these in, and then we can use our rules about algebra morphisms to pull M to the outside of the expressions, which we can do like this. And here we now need the determinant of a multivector, 
which Shirokov has provided in this paper on determinant other characteristic polynomial coefficients and inverses in Clifford algebras of arbitrary tree dimension. And now the final step is we know we have M applied to both sides of all our equalities and M is injective. So we can just remove it. And what we're left is an algorithm that's almost identical, but now works on multivectors. And this is just one of many algorithms in this book. Um, they have different trade-offs depending on the matrices you apply them to. And so they will have different trade-offs depending on the multivectors you apply them to too. Um, we need to look into more whether the trade-offs that were decided for matrices result in the same performance ordering as the multivectors. So this presentation was short. So there is much more work to do here. Um, as I said, there are more algorithms to translate. In particular, the logarithm would be an interesting one too. Um, um, in order to test the, I'm getting echo from the room. One of the things that functional matrices theories and computation uses to compare their algorithms is a set of test matrices which have various uh, pathological properties such as eigenvectors that are, sorry, eigenvalues that are way smaller in magnitude than other eigenvalues or eigenvalues which are all duplicate, that type of thing. And we need an analogous collection of pathological multivectors that would stress test these algorithms to try and find their corner cases where precision is lost. Uh, in particular, there might be some um, pathological matrices which don't have any multivector representation. So if you're optimizing an algorithm for those matrices, it won't be in, those optimizations won't be relevant to multivectors because those situations will never come up. Uh, having done that, we should then perform the same time complexity and accuracy analysis that the book does on these algorithms. And then finally, hopefully we can publish some implementation of these algorithms for other people to use. That ends my presentation. Any questions? Thank you very much.